Hi all, Karen here. Today we're going to be making this baby card that pops up and it has three blocks on the inside. Now, I used the Crafter's Companion pop-up confetti cube that came out quite a while ago and they no longer have it on their website, but Karen Bernstein just came out with a surprise cube and it will do the same thing. And if you want to look for it, it is Karen Bernstein's number 1226 surprise cube pop-up. You'll be able to make the same card. Uh, the box just goes together a little bit differently. But when I saw her uh, make the card, this was designed you know, to pop out of the box. But when I saw her glue it into the card, I was like, oh my gosh, that is so much more useful. And you can use it in so many ways. And you can even take this cube and use it like the little band box and attach it somewhere in the card to pop up something really large. So uh, we're probably going to try that one too later on. But yeah, so this is the card we're going to be making. And it folds down flat. And then it pops up. How fun is that? So all right, so let's get started. So I did a little bit of prep. And I have two of the boxes put together. And I have the pieces to make the third box right here. Let me move this out of the way. All right, so... The die is this piece here. And you cut you're gonna need to cut out two for each cube. So for this one, to make the three cubes, I needed six. So after you have it cut out, you can see there's score lines. We're just gonna fold on all of these score lines. When you're folding, you just want to make sure that it all lines up. So when you fold here, when this folds back, it should be nice and straight against the edge here. And that folds down. If you want to check yourself as you're going along. This folds in. So... This part here is where we're going to attach the rubber band, and this is going to be inside the cube. So this will fold in, Then these pieces fold out, these fold down, and then you have the little flap that's going to attach to the other piece. When I cut these, I cut these out two at a time, so uh, that one didn't have the cut lines as I mean, not the cut lines, the uh, score lines as much as this one does. Another way to check yourself is when you fold it back, these two should be flush. That folds over. This folds in. This folds in half. It's a little crooked. All right. I kind of did that kind of fast. So let me do a quick review here. So the one here in the middle is a mountain fold. The other two are valleys to get this to fold down. This folds in this way, back on itself, and then down on both sides. Now, I like to put a little bit of glue here. Just so the uh, where the rubber band goes, it's going to hold it all together. So I will glue both of these. Now, I am using number 12 rubber bands. Um, you can buy them on Amazon, or Karen Bernstein does sell them in small packs on her website if you don't want to buy the big packs on Amazon. Because uh, I bought the big pack on Amazon not realizing how big of a pack it was going to be. And uh, it's large. All right, so you have to put the rubber band through this hole. Now, the Crafter's Companion directions say to cut this rubber band and feed it through. 
and then tie it on the other side. But I have found it easier if you just put it through the hole, you know, loop it through, pull it taut, do the same thing on the other side. And then we'll just tie the two sides together. Um, I find that a lot easier. That's what I did with these. And my pop is just fine. That way you're not having to measure the two and a half centimeters and all that kind of stuff. So just size 12 rubber bands, loop through, tied in the middle. So we're going to apply glue to these flaps here. Now you want your piece here underneath so it doesn't get caught in the glue. Then you're gonna you can hold it down with your fingers like this and lay that flat. All right, we'll do it with the other side. Oop, I didn't fold the flap over. We will apply glue. Fold it down. Oh wait, we want this underneath. Fold that down. Fold that down. Fold it with your fingers. Lay the flap down. All right, then these two pieces get glued together. So they'll get glued like this. So your glue has to go on the outside of the flap again. lays in here. Now this you just want to make sure you're lined up. So if you want you can fold that down. There you go. Because you do want to make sure that when you We'll glue this last. That's all going to be lined up and we'll lay flat. All right. I'll give that a second before I try to tie the knot. Now, the reason why I haven't decorated this one yet is when you put this in the card, it has to fold forward or else the card won't close. Because if you watch this, I'm put it on the side, it folds forward. that way that's how that works so everything has to fold forward and it does have to be in a top folding five by seven um, or else it's going to hang off the edge I mean you could make it a seven by seven square or an eight by eight square but this part here has to be at least seven because you can see how close it gets to the edge you probably only have like a, yeah, a half an inch so yeah so it has to be a top fold five by seven card all right, this should have had enough time to grab. So now you'll just grab the two pieces and tie a knot. Let me fold that back. Let's see if I can do this to where you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to tie a double knot. Pull it tight. There you go. That's a lot easier than all the measuring and everything else that's in the directions. Oh, I just put glue on the wrong side. Take that off. Glue belongs on this side. And to glue it, I'm going to collapse the box. And just hold it there for a second.
All right, so now we're good. Just had to close it for a minute, and now I'm going to let it sit over here and dry. And while we do that, we're going to work on the front of the card. Because once you put everything inside, it's a little harder to do the front. So we're going to do the front first and then the inside. So to do the front, I've cut out some things here. I have two sets of baby things. I have one from Stitz, which has a little onesie, some overalls, a rocking horse, uh, some squares that are babies. They're separate. Uh, those are separate squares, so you can do whatever you want, because that's what I used on the front of this one here. And some shoes. Uh, the shoes do not have a back, so the shoes are see-through, so you'd have to cut another piece to do the back of the shoes. And then I have this one from Karen Bernstein, which is from her charms, that has baby. This baby is one piece. Uh, there's a bottle, a onesie, and a duck. You can see here, that's what the dies look like. So I cut out a bunch of things for the front, and I, and I have this uh, from the Year of Craft, which was letters, and I thought that would be really useful for the blocks, so I cut out some letters from here, and I just picked out random letters. And on the cubes themselves, you can see there's a grain, a wood grain. I didn't do the actual base cube. I thought it would weaken the paper too much. Uh, but I did do the two pieces on top of here. And I just picked a, a wood grain embossing folder I had in my stash. I think this one's Crafter's Companion. Uh, but, you know, they're all the same. Um, I just picked this one because it had a nice tight grain on it. And it would be good for something small like that. So that's what we have to work with. So to do this, I just ran, put the paper in, and all the little squares that go on the inside here. I kind of did it all at the same time. I just kind of laid everything in. Just kind of filled it up with everything I could and then just ran it through my Gemini and then when I was done to make it look a little bit more like wood I took Genix K's Sandy Beach and all I did was move this out of the way so I don't get ink on it I just took each square and ran the ink pad over the top so it was Gina K, Sandy Beach. It's a nice uh, light brown color, and it really does, when it dries, if you want to make something with sand, it really does look like sand when that dries. That's a really nice color to have. All right, so on the front, first let's construct our baby and our rocking horse here. So the rocking horse, when you cut it out, it's one piece like this. Move the baby out of the way. So you could color it, but I wanted a little bit more dimension to it. Uh, and it does have this tiny little piece for the saddle, which goes here. But I wanted the wood here also. So I cut it out out of brown and white. And now I'm just going to take this and snip the horse off. go. Now we'll glue this down. And we'll glue the saddle down. There you go. 
I'm going to put a little color in the main. So I'm going to grab C2. I think I want C2. Yeah, we'll grab C2. We'll put a little color in here. We're going to color the main a little bit. Just so the white horse doesn't look quite so stark. I'm going to grab a little bit darker. I'm going to grab C5 to give him some hoofs. Which I probably should have done before I glued that on. Let's see. I'm going to grab C1. Maybe give him a little shading here. Give him a little bit of a nose. And, I'm, and there's a line here for his eye. But I'm going to put like a little mark there. Make it show up a little bit more. So there's our horse. All right, put that over here. Let's see. So we have a bib here. Not sure if I'm going to use the bib or not. And we have baby. So let's get baby all glued down here. All right, so to, to make the baby, we grab the die. So this was one piece. Then there's a square that cuts out. All right, so to, to get the pieces for this, this is from the Karen Berniston die. This piece is all one. Now she has her letters. It's one die, but when you cut this out, it cuts out the frame and the letter all at the same time, which is kind of nice. So you just have B-A-B-Y, and it cuts out both pieces at the same time, and this is the large piece on the bottom. Right, so we have our baby, we have our rocking horse. Now this I want to put on here. And then it's going to come down here. The rocking horse will be here. So I'm going to line up the rocking horse. The space under the rocking horse and this, I want to end up being the same once we're done here. So the baby's going to be here. Then in this space up here, I want to put Welcome Little One. So I'm just going to heat emboss this straight onto here. I'm thinking about there.
I think I do want to put a little yellow around the outside. I'm going to grab some sweet corn. Yeah, this Gina K sweet corn color is a nice soft yellow. Keep that there for the inside pieces. So now this will get glued on here. Let's decide where we want to put this. I think I no, I think like this. All right. So let's glue down the horse. Yeah, so I'm looking at this space down here and this space here. That looks about the same. A little bib. All right, so that's going to be our front. Okay, let me grab the card base. Now the yellow is just the standard um, six and three quarters by four and three quarters. That's just going to get centered on here. Now I'll have all the measurements for the other papers down below. And the reason why I started off cutting this smaller is once I, I started off with a 12 by 12. And when I cut these to five and three quarters by six and three quarters, I didn't have enough left to make this whole panel. And I didn't want to cut into another piece of paper. So that's why I made this a little bit smaller. So I would only use one piece of paper for the inside of this. And it ended up being really cute. Uh, so you can definitely do that. Uh, you know, cut the inside that you really need it to be the standard five and three quarters by, I mean, six by three quarters by four and three quarters. And then you can just cut this as a, as a different shape to uh, only use one piece of paper. So these are going to get glued on the inside. First, let me ink them like I did the outside. All right, now that part is all done. Got some stray glue here. All right, now for the fun part. Let's make the cubes. All right, so here's the two I did earlier. This is the one that I glued when we started. I'm still catching. There we go. Once you get these folded a couple times, they really get going. That piece gets trained to stay. Now, the one thing you need to remember when you're doing this is that they must fold forward. And so once you make your cube and you say, okay, this is the way it folds. So, so this way it folds forward. This two already labeled. So once you decide which one's going to be your bottom, put a B on there, which ones will then be your front piece, put an F on the front. So that way you can keep track of it as you're decorating. You don't end up decorating the wrong sides. So let's take the new one that we just did. All right, it folds forward this way. So this is my going to be my bottom. And this folds forward like this. So this is going to be my front. All right, so as long as we can keep track of that, we are good to go. So now we just have to decide 
which colors, which way we want to do it. And I think I'm going to do the yellow on top because I did pick yellow to go on the bottom around the, uh, the message on the inside. So I think I'm going to put the yellow on top so it matches that. All right, so now, you know what? I'm going to leave, leave these this way because this is what we're going to be decorating. So now we have a blue panel and a pink panel for each side. And we have to do the front and we will also have to do the top. So let's get those glued down. Yeah, so the outside one is one and three quarters and the inside is one and a half square. So one and three quarters, one and a half. All right, so now we have six. So now three of these will get pictures and three of these will get letters. Now for the pictures, I have the duck, the onesie, and the bottle all from the Karen Berniston die. If you see here, she has holes here, and this is all to stencil after you've cut things out. So here you can have the heart and the sleeves and the duck. It gives you a place for the eye, the bill, and the um, wing. So I did these two already. So those two are good to go. And because I'm not using them as charms, I did snip this little piece off. I'm just going to snip that off. And to color this, I'm going to slide this into the die. Go okay, let that sit there. And I'm going to take a very light gray. I need my black blending brush because you don't want to make it too dark. And now for the bottle top, I'm going to grab yellow 11. Uh, I'm going to pull it off. And then I'm going to take something lighter. This is E51. And I'm just going to go across and color it all in. There we go. Now we have our bottle. Yeah, a lot of Karen Berniston's dyes have stencils on them, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's get my duck onesie. Let me straighten that a little bit. All right, so we're going to glue this down. All right, so the front is what we're going to be... There we go. We don't put them on upside down. So on the front, I'm going to put the duck up here. And we'll put the bottle here and the onesie here. Like that. So this is going to sit like this, the top, I need to face this way.
Now I'm going to flip these up this way. So the bottom that's going to be attached to the card is facing me. But I want you to be able to see what I'm going to do here. So now all we're going to do, first let me get this glue off of here. Okay, we're going to bring in our card base. I'm going to lay this flat because we want to make sure when we glue in, we glue the uh, three cubes together, that they're going to fit in the card. So there is a decent amount of space there to deal with, to work with. So then this will just go on here. But you want to make sure that once you apply glue, that you uh, let it, you line it up and make sure it's going to fit. So we're going to apply glue to the top where the letters are. I'll line it up like this where it fits in the card the way I like it. Then this will go on top. And so I can press this down. I'm going to fold it. This is like the one tricky part. And it probably would dry if I let it just sit there by itself. I just want to make sure this is all lined up. It has a firm, oops, let that slide here. I just want to give it a good press. All right, so now our cubes are all stuck together. We're going to let that dry. And we're going to stop touching it. All right, now our cubes, I'm just going to let it sit over here. So now on the inside here, so this will sit back here because you have to sit it back all the way because when it folds forward, it's going to come all the way to the front. So that gives you this much space here for an inside message. So I've cut this square four by four. So this square is three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And I heat embossed, congratulations to the new parents. This was also part of the Crafter's Companion um, set that I had. This will go here. Now here you have a choice. If you just glue the bottom, your card will open up flat like this. And it will lay like this. If you put a little dab of glue on the back here and glue it to the bottom squares, then your card will stand up like this. So I'm going to stand it up like this. This is still kind of wet, but if you're doing this at home, let's give this, you know, 15 minutes or so to dry so you're not dealing with it being still wet. Because once this is nice and dry, this, is, this will act as one big piece, and it'll be a lot easier. All right, so we have the back, the bottom glued down. I'm just going to put a little dab of glue here. Yeah, see, this isn't dry yet. So when you do this at home, let this dry. So I'm just going to hold it here for a moment. turn it around and you don't need to glue all three pieces and it actually does look a little bit better if you only glue the bottom because then the, it looks like the top one is kind of just kind of floating there a little bit better and it, it doesn't look glued at all and just kind of looks like it's just kind of sticking all right so now we have our panel Now, I'm not going to try to close this while it's wet. This this really does need to dry. So I'm probably not going to close it for a good half hour or so. But yeah, this is this is it. Just let it all dry and now you have your, your fold-up card. And let me do the one, grab the one I did yesterday. So yeah, once it dries, it's all one sturdy piece. And, and you can manhandle it a little bit. But yeah, but how cute are these? But I, I really do like these. I think I'm going to be making a bunch of these to have them. 
I think when I have my uh, my tent at the market here, I think I'm definitely going to have this as the baby card. But yeah, how cute though. I love these little blocks. I, I just, this is really adorable. So I hope you enjoyed this card. And I hope you give it a try and think of some other uses for these squares now that we can, Karen Bernstein pointed out, you can glue it in the card. And I just like the little, just like the little band box. I mean, you could even put a little band box here on the, this side and attach a little something. Uh, but this is, you know, a great way to use this die. And hope you get your dies out. And if you don't have the old Crafter's Companion one, you know, go look on Karen Berniston's site. And it is, it is uh, die number 1226 Surprise Cube Pop-Up is the name of the die that she's selling now. So I hope you give it a try. And I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, stay crafty.